This is Bill Cosby coming at you with music and fun, and if you're not careful, you may learn something before it's done. Jello and sweaters remind us of one man. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be learning more about the life and career of Bill Cosby. I am your father. I brought you in this world, and I'll take you out. <laughs> William Henry Cosby Jr. was born July 12, 1937, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Cosby was a class clown who focused more on sports than studying. After dropping out to work, he joined the Navy and earned his high school equivalency. Cosby eventually left college to develop his talent for making people laugh. Cosby toured comedy clubs in the early 1960s and made fans with his informal routines and silly faces. Uh, right. <laughs> By 1963, he landed on The Tonight Show and helped subtly push civil rights forward with his relatable, observational stories. In fact, Cosby expanded his audience by avoiding controversial or race-driven themes. Uh, I'd watch the movie and then run home and jump in bed with my mother because she'd protect me. And uh, today, now that I look at my mother, she's only 4'1". And uh, I think she'd have trouble trying to punch out Frankenstein, you know. Read his knee, Captain! That kind of thing. Mid-decade, he won a deal with Warner Brothers and began releasing comedy albums that earned him praise and loads of Grammy Awards. Cosby's big breakthrough came in 1965 when he became the first African-American to co-star in a dramatic TV show. I Spy proved the likable comedian could also act by earning Cosby three successive Emmys before the show's end in 1968. Besides his TV role, thriving stand-up career, and successful comedy albums, Cosby decided to sing. 1967's Silver Throat, Bill Cosby Sings was a hit, but Cosby largely returned to comedy for the remainder of his career. 1969's hit sitcom The Bill Cosby Show meant he wasn't away from TV long. This marked the first time a black entertainer starred in a self-titled comedy series. Following that success, Cosby returned to school to earn a master's and a doctorate. He then nurtured his lifelong desire to teach by actively promoting education as a cast member on 1971's PBS kids show The Electric Company. He also recorded Bill Cosby Talks to Kids About Drugs, which won him a Grammy the following year. Do you think it's fun to have to take a pill or to sniff something or to snort something or to shoot something in your arm to make yourself feel, as a lot of people think, better? No! In 1972, Cosby showed off his many talents as host of the short-lived variety series The New Bill Cosby Show. But that year's educational children's cartoon, Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids, was the big winner. During the 70s, Cosby partnered with other high-profile African-American entertainers to combat the popular black exploitation style with more clean comedy films. Some were successes and some were failures. After taking over as host of the educational Picture Pages TV segments, Cosby's credibility won him jobs as a trusted spokesman for brands like Coca-Cola, Kodak, and Jell-O. This stuff is great. But the best was yet to come. In 1984, Cosby debuted his next TV triumph as creator and star of The Cosby Show. With a functional, affluent, and well-educated black family at its core, this series changed the way African Americans were portrayed on TV. It also single-handedly saved the sitcom format and NBC from failure with its bright humor, killer ratings, and multitude of awards. I love you. Yeah, Dad. Huh? I know. Yeah. yeah. And maybe your mother loved you too. The show spawned the 1987 spin-off, A Different World. Meanwhile, Cosby put pen to paper for bestsellers like Fatherhood and Love and Marriage. But not everything he touched was gold. He wrote and produced 1987 spy spoof Leonard Part 6, but was so disappointed in the finished product, he discouraged audiences from attending. He tried again with 1990's Ghost Dad and was marginally more successful. The road is that way. Eat shit. Thanks, I'm trying to quit. Once his run as Dr. Heathcliff Huxtable ended in 1992, he brought his unique style back to the big screen in The Meteor Man and Jack. 1992's The Cosby Mysteries was followed four years later by his sitcom Cosby, where he reunited with Felicia Rashad and showed off his grouchy side. Do not use my dish towels. And look at all this... What is the smoke? Now, look, just let me ask you, are you yelling because you think I'm still out in the yard? <laughs> Tragedy struck in 1997 when Cosby and his longtime wife Camille lost their son Ennis in a murder. I'm sorry.
sorry to hear about your loss. He was my hero. Soon after, Cosby was involved in a paternity scandal, though the accuser was later arrested for extortion. Cosby focused on work, and in 1998, he launched Kids Say the Darndest Things. You stood on it? Yeah. And it just collapsed? Yeah. And then you fell? I fell on the floor. And hit your... What did you hit? The ground. <laughs> After four years, he moved on to other projects, including the award-winning kids' show Little Bill and 2004's live-action Fat Albert movie. That's who we are. Yeah. And we're coming out on dividend. What's dividend? I don't know. I know don't you. start. Outside showbiz, Dr. Cosby has become famous for his social conscience and philanthropy. In 2009, his family-friendly comedy earned him the Mark Twain Prize for American Humor. But most importantly, Bill Cosby changed African-American stereotypes and united audiences of all kinds thanks to his upbeat outlook. Hey, come on, let's go, man. We spent the whole night with this bum.